Look up the word crazy in the dictionary and you might just find an asterisk beside the definition that says, listen to the Subiquitous podcast featuring Sue Duffield and you'll find out what crazy means. Sue's travelogue journey of unfiltered stories, impossible miracles, and faith-filled fun will be revisited right here. So buckle up and let's get going with this humorous travelogue of an unfiltered saint, Subiquitous. I couldn't ask for a more specific and more fun episode than episode number 100 with my new friend, Steve Archer. I say new friend because we've become friends through the incredible social media that we call Facebook. And so it's so funny, even though I knew about him for years and knew about this incredible 70s iconic contemporary Christian band, let me tell you something, Steve, you changed my life forever as a kid. And I know I'm probably a little, maybe we're the same age, are we? I don't even know. I I got you by a few years. Only a couple. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, you know, you're one of the few artists I, I know that talk like you sing now here when 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 i first heard your voice i when you were just speaking to me i thought up oh, there's steve archer you know how you listen to some people like michael mcdonald if you've ever seen anything on him where he talks and then sings completely different right that's so true yes yeah that that's a great example absolutely <laughs> Well, yeah. we, we are just honored to have you on this podcast, and this I'm has honored. been a dream of mine to try to figure out the technology to get you on here. Oh, and- I, I appreciate it. I'm honored. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell me, when what was it like, if you can, just, and I don't care how long it takes, tell me, what was it like in 1971, 72, 73, when you hit literally like we said earlier without being recorded you said you were starting your group and this incredible ministry of contemporary christian music and there were hardly any radio stations that would even know to even play this right right yeah it, you, and even 1970 uh is probably when my brother and i um we go back to the late 60s doing the singing contest thing you know um, in our denomination, right, and we won second place in the nation, you know, for all 50 states. And that was very inspirational to us because even though, you know, I'm in high school at the time and Tim is just finishing high school, uh, we love sing- singing together as brothers. And, uh, you know, it just, it was something that encouraged us. And in 1970, 71, right around there, uh, is when we met some people that were very influential in our lives, one of them being Pat Boone, mm-hmm. who came to a concert and took us under his wing, and we spent a lot of time with him and and mentoring from him. And then the first person to ever take us into a recording studio, Andre Crouch. Wow. You know? And that was just for two songs. It was just for a, a 45, you know. So right. that should tell you a lot right there that they, they were still making 45s, right. you know. <laughs> and, and kids, that's it's not a weapon. That's a little disc thing to play music on. But, you know, it, it was, uh, you're so right. There was no social media. There weren't the cell phones and all the gadgets and the iPads and all of that. And I think the only airplay, our first record came out in early 72, which would have been the uh, the one that ended up having two colors. Uh, the original record was Any Day Now. Right. And, and then when Benson bought the record from us, because they liked it, uh, they did a new cover, and, uh, and it, then they called it The Archers Featuring Life in Jesus. That was the first record. But because we were Jesus music and because we were more of a contemporary Jesus pop, Jesus rock sound, uh, there were no contemporary Christian radio stations that I know of. I know. Especially on the East Coast, there was nothing. Right. right. Well, I, even on the West Coast, I mean, unless it was some radio station that would let some guy come on at 2 o'clock in the morning and play his favorite rock out songs. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the world was sleeping. Right. You know? That's right. And the deadheads would stay up for it. You know, <laughs> like, right, it's going to be Christian rock. <laughs> and there were like three bands anyway. Right. 
maybe Petra and Resban or something like that. That's right. We were just fortunate coming from church that there were a few Christian ministries out there on radio that would play some of our songs from our first record. So we kind of lucked out there. Yeah, that's great. And so Andre took it on. He gave you pretty much, um, was that around the same time that Ralph Carmichael was involved with any of that with Light Records too? No, no. no the okay. only thing he knew about Ralph Carmichael uh, at that time was we had sung a couple of his songs in church, right? like Quiet Place oh, or great Pass song. It On, you know, and with the youth group and so on and so forth, because we were, our dad was nice enough to let us jam out in church <laughs> for the youth group, right? and the parents would stand at the back of the wall <laughs> while we were jamming out <laughs> for Jesus. That's you right. Know? And we were in California, so we called them Youth Quakes. Oh, I love it. Our youth group was really growing because of that. Mm -hmm. And that's what was important to our precious mom and dad, who were in the ministry for over 50 years. And God bless them. They've passed on now. But what was important to them is not that if we grew our hair out or if we were jamming on the drums and bass and electric guitar and all of that and you know, singing that like those early songs, like "Put on Jesus, Let Your Light Shine." <laughs> the with that, you know, yeah. just getting into it. Um, and you have to imagine it with a, a drummer. <laughs> and the kids loved it. But what was important to them? Older people that would come to, them, well, I don't know, Pastor Lee. You know what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, a little, that's a little too much right there. You know. That's right. And by the way, we grew up on Bill Gaither. So That's right. They were people that could handle some of the smooth Gaither stuff, but not this, no. whatever this Jesus music right. stuff. What was important to them was the fruit. Exactly. And young people were coming to Jesus and getting saved. In right. our church, this is before we ever met Andre. And Andre came and saw us and liked us. And he said, you guys need to record something. <laughs> you know, Andre had done yeah. like two records already. That's right. Like the record, Take the Message Everywhere, you know? Yeah. And I know you remember that. And yeah. we were like, well, yeah, we agree. You know, <laughs> we were teenagers and that would be great. How do you do that? <laughs> Seriously. So how old was Tim? Was Tim a teenager too at that Let's point? See, I would have been uh, 17, 17, 16 okay. or 17. Yeah. And Tim would have been 19 or 20 wow. at that time. Wow. And we went into... Uh, Whitney Studios in mm-hmm. L.A., and we recorded two songs. One of them was an original song, the song Put on Jesus, and another, the other song was one that our brother Gary had written. And we had Andre producing. We had Sandra Crouch was there. Wow. Billy Thedford. Yes. Playing bass. We had a drummer. And Perry Morgan came along, too, just to, to hang out and be support. So we had Andre Crouch and the Disciples. In the studio. Wow. What we wouldn't have given as kids on the East Coast to have had that experience of what you had in California. Yeah. You know, here's the funny part, and I and I will say this because we grew up in the same same denomination. Jeff and I were doing teen talent search on the East Coast when you were doing teen talent on, yeah. the, on the West Coast. And we laugh about it because we go back even with Evie Tornquist. Yeah. You know, all of us on the on the Jersey side were trying so hard to keep up with the archers. <laughs> oh. You don't know how much of an influence you were in your music. And I will tell you this, too. You're absolutely right. There were a lot of people, the older ones, who didn't quite get the contemporary Christian music scene. Yeah. But what they did get... And especially when Jeff and I were with Sammy Hall Singers, what they did get when they would watch hundreds and hundreds of kids come to Jesus. Yes. The grandparents and the parents were like, okay, you know, we may not like this music, but we love what's happening. Absolutely. Just like I said with my parents, there's fruit there. Right. People's lives are being changed. You know, you can't, I've learned this as I've become a grandpa. Yeah. You know, not just a father, I but know. a grandpa. I love it. I don't totally relate to all the music that they play, <laughs> but I'll enjoy it with them to the best of my ability. That's right. Most of it I do because 
I've been around music so long, and you have as well, that, yeah. you know, our music world is, is pretty diverse and big, and we're open to, you know, different sounds and things like that. But of course, for us, there needs to be some nice melody. There needs to be good singers. Right. So right. some of the things that, that they might listen to that's a little bit edgier yeah. or, you know, has mostly just beat and monotone, you know, melodies. What I'm saying is that I understand more now that they don't expect me to like their music and be right there with them. I'm from a different era, but guess what they like? Mm. They like all the crooner stuff. See? That I raise my kids on. I love it. I love they it. They sing it. They know the songs. Yeah. And you know what that is? I think that's because of, of Dad being such a musician yourself that it's just like my parents did the same thing. They exposed both Jeff and myself to everything. Yes. And that we decided that we loved music. Yes. I don't want to get on a tangent, but I will say <laughs> the older I get, I'm much more selective. Yes. In what I listen to. That's what it comes down to. But I was raised on gospel music. I was raised on church music. I was raised on even Southern gospel. Our oldest brother sang uh, in the Golden State Quartet. He okay. sang his own quartet called The Waymakers. Oh, my goodness. He was out of Bethany Bible College and, you know, and met his wife there. Right. But I was also raised on The Carpenters. I was raised on Al Green, Earth, Wind, and Fire. <laughs> yeah. Christian groups, the Imperials, you know, the Imperials had an influence on us because they were gospel, but they had become contemporary right. in their approach. So there's quite a variety there. Right. A lot of pop artists that I listen to. I've just always, and maybe you feel this way as well, I've just always loved great singers. Doing rock or oh, pop yeah. or soul, great singers. Great singers, and that's exactly what you gave us in your music was, especially you, Steve, honestly. You did a couple solo projects, correct? I think you yeah. did. Yeah, and you know, we would often say, usually when a singer in that's in a group and then they break off and maybe do a solo project, it's like, ah, but you know what? There's always been that expertise of singing that you have had. I'll just go back a few years ago. You were in town. You were in Nashville in Franklin for a CCM night. It was one of the worst horrific storms. I don't know if you remember this or not, but this it was raining. It was awful. Yes, I remember. It was so cool because you were there. Tim was there. Janice was there. Yeah. It's more than just the connection of the music. And I know the music is, is, is so deeply in, embedded in us, but you can sense the anointing of God. Oh. And I don't care what you've been through. You've probably been through a lot of stuff, but it still translates from the stage. How does that translate in your life? You know, I think it's the influence of my parents. Their relationships were real. Mm. They may have even struggled in their own lives. My parents come out of Oklahoma, born and raised. They got married, and my dad had already visited relatives out in California and fell in love with it. Wow. The mountains, because of the ocean, you don't have that in Oklahoma. <laughs> 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 and so he was like, my mom's name was Neoma, but he, her nickname was Peggy. Wow. Everyone always knew my mom as Peggy. And he said, you know what, Peg, I want to move to California. And this was this was the, in the, the middle to late 30s. This is like 37. And things weren't so great in Oklahoma. Nor up north, you had the Dust Bowl. And then you also had the stock market crash and right. all that stuff going on. And people were were out of work. And they grew up in, uh, as farmers. My dad got involved in a young age, a hardworking man, you know. Right. He had developed a trade. And he thought, well, I want to go out to California and try this. I have an uncle who went out there and was successful. And while they were out there in California, you know, having two boys, Gary and Ron, my dad gets introduced to the Lord through a neighbor who keeps bugging him about coming to church. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and it's one of those things, you know, the good earth people that are just good down to earth people. I hear you. I hear you. Sometimes they're kind of in that mode that 
you know, that religious thing is okay and everything, but I, I'm doing all right. You know, I'm just <laughs> working hard, living. Long. My dad was a little prideful about that, but this person did not give up. And so I think my dad and mom, not so much my mom. My mom's a sweetheart. She's an absolute right. angel. But the guy was persistent, and I think my dad went to church just to get the guy. Just to get the guy off his back, right? <laughs> And heard about Jesus, and man, my dad had been through some stuff as a kid, and he got hit. Wow. I mean, he got a wave, a tidal wave over him about Jesus. And I mean, he went from that to being saved. He and mom both, Gary and Ron, got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. And he headed for the ministry. He headed for, because my dad was just that kind of a guy. He Right. He never met a stranger. He was that kind of a guy. Right. He was very, very easy to meet people. So as we're growing up, Tim and I, you can tell when my parents got saved, because my two older brothers are Gary Lee and Ronald Anthony. Then my parents get saved, and it's Stephen Mark and <laughs> Timothy James. <laughs> I'm just glad it wasn't Methuselah or you know, <laughs> some of those other Bible names. Right, right. But Zephaniah or something. You can tell. I mean, right away, they're like picking out Bible names. That's, oh my. And uh, we that always is... say they, they backslid with Janice. I don't think <laughs> there's a, a Janice in the Bible. I don't, I don't know. Oh, that's but my funny. Mom, my mom always loved that name, and they were done. They With four boys, they were done, and yeah. they got a surprise. They and that surprise. surprise was Janice, and boy, did my mom love that. And what a surprise she was. When did... I know she was just a teenager, right? With Fresh Surrender. Had she had she recorded before that with you at all? No. She was 17 then. But when she was 15, during the summer, she was allowed to tour with us. Because Nancy yeah. was with someone that right. looked out for her. Right, right, right. And then when she was 16, she was also, uh, also toured with us and even got up on stage with us. And so she knew our song. It was just a natural progression when Nancy got married and left the group, and Billy as well. Same reason he got married and, and left the group. There was, in 1976-77, there was that natural progression for Janice to step in. In fact, she even recorded a song on the Fresh Surrender album that Nancy was supposed to do on our next record that Nancy had written called Change. Right. And so that was kind of her first solo venture. Uh, but no, she had never, never recorded with us. When Janice joined you and then when Fresh Surrender came out, I'll never forget going to the bookstore or a Christian bookstore and getting that album cover and seeing this beautiful blonde and thinking, oh, my word, I had no clue that you even had a baby sister. Right. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you, you hear this voice come out. I was like astonished. And what a difference that album, at least it made for us. There are so many great tunes on that album, Steve. I mean, there really are. And we actually did. We took liberty a few weeks ago, <laughs> like an idiot. We took liberty to do a more jazzy, influential, slow it down rendition, Duffield wise, of yes. With Every Breath I Take. With every breath I take, let me thank you for. The matchless love you sent my way With care and understanding for my vain mistakes With every breath I take And I saw it and I loved it. <laughs> oh, I, I abs and so did my cousin Donnie who wrote who that. Who wrote that song. Yeah. What a great song. Yes. And that was just by accident of us just wanting to honor you because... Your cousin who wrote that song just thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun just to slow it down and see what would happen? I promise you, we never rehearsed it once we were on live. We never did rehearse it. Sometimes that's the best way to go, you know? There was so much that happened in the 80s, too, with you. And now, let's back up a little bit. I know you were involved in a lot of these Jesus festivals everywhere. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Well, the first one, and I'm sure you know, but remember when they had Explo, Explo 72? Explo 72. I missed going by about that much, and I should have yeah. gone. There was, there, how many? Like a quarter of a million people, right? I mean, I don't even yeah, know. There was, there was, yeah, for the whole complex of everything that was going on besides the Cotton Bowl, 
uh, where Andre Crouch and, and some other artists were performing. I would think that probably Love Song was there. Danny Lee and the Children yeah. oh. were there. <laughs> yes. You know, Danny Lee, who wrote a lot that's of right. songs. One way. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. And that's where we met Jamie Owens. Right. Jamie Owens Collins. And it's also where we met Barry Maguire for the first time. And we had a story to tell him, by the way, when we when we met him. So this was our original. We call it the Archer's original group, which is Tim and I, Nancy Short, Billy Masters, and Freddie Satterfield. Right. And, of course, just a quick caveat about Freddie Satterfield. Our very first drummer at 15 years of age went on to be the drummer for the Downing. That's right. And from there with the Oak Ridge Boys for like two decades. That's crazy. So I know that progression there. So that's that's the original archers that were was out there at Expo 72. We get in a van and there's this really kind of cool looking bearded guy, you know, sitting in the van. They're picking <laughs> up and we got to drive about 20 miles to go to wherever we're going. And the guy goes, hey, guys, this is Barry McGuire, you know, and we're like, hi. And we're like, <laughs> We even knew Barry from the rock and roll because we, right. we were aware. We we always tried to stay aware of our music surroundings. We weren't uh, I know. the fishbowl of no. church music. Right. We were listening to rock and pop and all of right. that as well. And that influenced. That's that influences true. you. You just don't let the lyrics and the spirit of it influence you because your heart is for Christ. You know, your, your message is... Wow, what an awesome way to be able to see, uh, share Jesus right. and see these kids respond. Yeah. And, oh, we loved him right away. I mean, he was just the most wonderful, jovial, you know, <laughs> I'm a cowboy guy, you know. Oh, oh God, my. just what an amazing presence yeah. that guy had. And that's, that was the ap atmosphere wow. around the whole Expo 72. Right. So I think we maybe just only did that one festival that year we were we were brand new i don't i don't think our record had come out yet two summers from that we were doing like five or six and then ten right and all over the country from jesus northwest to mercer pennsylvania to igthus at front royal virginia key 73 at the los angeles coliseum i mean just all kinds of jesus festivals mm, and we right. love we that's absolutely right. loved it well, I heard you in, and I don't know the exact date, but it was in Muddy Run in in Mercer, Pennsylvania, in that area there with the Creation Festival. Yes. Those are the kinds of things that you just, you just never realize how much of an influence in your life. And I, I took a friend of mine with me and we were, oh gosh, we were out of our minds. We were literally out of our minds. Yeah, yeah. Amazing how the influence of contemporary Christian music just absolutely just did me in, in a good way, like you say, in a totally good way. Me too. I mean, you think of all of the other bands and all of the other groups in those early days that we not only got to hear, but we got to share the stage with. Right. How excited we were that there were all of these other people that were out there and, and they were doing different vibes and different kinds of music. It was still pop or rock or... Right soul or whatever i mean andre crouch i mean my goodness i know the first time we were able to to tour and go open for him oh man oh my goodness it, you know we were just on cloud nine yeah. all That's the amazing. time we would come out and open and go well they're gonna forget this real quick you know <laughs> what was that group that <laughs> opened andre i can't remember you know, you sell yourself short because I still think when it came to harmony, even with Nancy, it was fabulous. But oh, yeah. there was something about the family harmony, though. I don't know oh. what I don't know what it was, but yeah. yeah, it just is just so great. So you have been in our neck of the woods recently and you have been in Nashville recently. Yeah. Tell us what's going on with this whole new project. We wanted to do, and, and thanks to my brother Tim and his wife Cynthia, they wanted to do a, kind of a statement concert, get the group, because we had not been touring and doing a lot of concerts together for, oh, at least a decade. Right. And doing solo stuff, but then we were also doing group stuff in the late 80s. And, and in 1992, we released an album called Colors of Your Love through Reunion Records. And I love that record, you know, I, mm -hmm. that was fun making that record. 
but we hadn't been touring a lot. So we didn't feel like we were really on it or really fresh. And yeah, but we did some rehearsing and, and Tim and Cynthia did all the work to set it up at a little theater there in Franklin, Tennessee, where they were living at the time and just got the greatest people involved, the most mm -hmm. wonderful Tim Akers, God I rest him. Oh, it wonderful, just... precious Tim Akers, incredibly talented That's man, right. and some of the best musicians and singers ever in Nashville oh, and, no doubt. that are not just known in Nashville, but they're known all over. Right. You know. That's right. What we did is we kind of did a a vote online. If we're in concert, what songs would you like to hear? <laughs> oh man! Out of two hundred and some songs, we had to pick about thirteen. Because we had some friends on the concert with us, so we weren't going to be able to do an hour and a half. We could maybe do 45 minutes to right. an hour because we had Farrell and Farrell. That's right. Cheryl Keggy, Gary Chapman. Evie was there. Evie Torrenquist was there. You know who was in the audience that night? He didn't sing, but it was David Meese was there that night. Yes! Sitting right, we were sitting right next to him. Yes, David Meese. The young lady from Australia was there, too. Jessica St. James. Jessica St. James. There. She couldn't stay the whole time, but but she had come by, and, and there were some record producers there, and some industry people were there. Rebecca St. James. I'm sorry, Rebecca. Rebecca. That's right. Rebecca St. James. That's right, yeah. yeah. She was there, and of course, her brothers are... Um, oh, I know. Well, that great group. For King and Country. For King and Country. Yeah. But it was just one of those things. So we, we came up with the people that liked our music picked as their top like 10 or 13 songs. We got the band together. We rehearsed as best we could. And the weather hit. And we were just hoping there were going to be people there. And we, we knew there was going to be a pretty good crowd because we had some advance, you know, oh, sales yeah, on tickets. Right. And then we just got up and sang our hearts out. It was unbelievable. And hoped that <laughs> we were too off. <laughs> And we remembered most of the lyrics. And you did. You did. You didn't even have any flashcards. <laughs> you know, this thing would already be out there, but this was the fall right before COVID. So that took two years out of our uh, wind, out of our sails. And uh, and also, uh, my, my brother had to have uh, some surgery. Yes. Um, there's there's some wonder wonderful testimonials through this time of waiting and waiting. Right. But we finally got to do it, and so we've kind of we had to wait a while to get into post production because you know how it is. Even though it's a live concert, and you have a wonderful time, and it's so much fun, and <laughs> these classic songs, there's still some things to fix. Right. That's right. So we're in that process, and we are, we're almost done. We've got another session coming up in a couple of months in Nashville. And if you guys are ever around there, let us know, because if we're in town at the same time... Then oh, we, I would love it. That would be... Even if we were just a fly on the wall in the studio, we'd... We had some wonderful friends come by when we were there yeah. in February. Oh. Reba Rambo came. That's awesome. Uh, it was That's so awesome. good to see her. But I would say we're, we're shooting for the fall Okay. cheer. To get it out there. And what will it be called? It will be The Archers. You know, our first live album was called Celebrate Live. Right. We did that out at Melody Land Center back in 1980. Oh, my. This one is, a, I, I don't know the exact title because we're st still kind of in that mode. Once we start mixing and mastering, and we'll get down to the, <laughs> the absolute <laughs> title. Instead of it being like, old Jesus music people sing songs you might want to hear live... <laughs> In concert. That's a bit of a long title. <laughs> but you know what? Every one of us will buy it just because of that title. <laughs> yes, there you go. No, it's, it's probably just going to be the Archer's oh, uh, 50th it. anniversary okay. live in concert. Well, be aware that uh, when it comes out, I'm going to bl I'm going to blow up my social media and I'm going to blow it up and promote it for for sure. Thank you. But anyway, Stephen, closing. If you just want to take some time, just a few minutes here as we close, I just want to say number one again, thank you, and I hope that our listeners, especially those, and trust me, it's gonna it's gonna broaden the horizon here on the Subiquitous podcast because. My demographic literally is my age. Yeah. So my age, listening to, to Steve Archer, 
I can only imagine what they're thinking, and I can. I'm hoping I'm I'm asking the right questions that they would like to hear. But let me let me ask you a little personal question, if I can. What were some of the hurdles that you had to overcome by being? I would call literally. You you were so instrumental in introducing the world along with Andre and along with Randy Stonehill and along with Love Song. I mean, you really were right in the middle of all of that. What were some of the hurdles that you had to overcome? Yeah, and you had Larry Norman and Petra, the Resurrection. All of them, and yeah. And just on and on. Well, the hurdles are you're young. And whether we grew up in church or not and we're preacher's kids, your faith your salvation is going to be tested, period. But when you get out and you're on kind of a platform and you're on a stage and you want people to see Jesus in what you do, but people also see you. Mm -hmm. And if you get caught up in being seen, if you get caught up in they're seeing me and how people feel about how you look. And, you know, we always try to be cool and hip and stylish and, you know, that's right. that's you right. know and, uh, because it's not that we didn't love quartets, but, you know, we went and saw Elvis twice live. So <laughs> Elvis dressed a little differently. He was a little different. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> and so were a lot of, you know, the other rock groups. And it's not that it's not that we weren't genuinely trying to be. We wanted to look like something young people would look at and go, hey, that's cool. Right. I want to check right. that out. Because right. they see your album cover first. You know, you mentioned Janice on that first album cover. And you said, I saw that album cover in the record store. Do you know how many college guys bought that record who <laughs> care less what the record <laughs> the, Listen, I know for sure I can, I can count on both hands and feet how many musician men friends of mine that didn't give yeah. a rip about what was on the inside but they, they just oh. said look at that picture of janice archer she oh. is drop dead gorgeous the rose among <laughs> the thorns i'm telling you and uh so it yeah. didn't hurt you no know? it did it, not it didn't hurt at all and, <laughs> but yeah. it, the hurdles are just it's hard for us and i know you feel this way it's hard to say the word fame it is because we're not out. You know, I was on a, the pilot show uh, of a show called Star Search. Right, know? right. And I love the fact that I can tell people, well, you know, I lost on Star Search. <laughs> 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 but the guy that won that night sang background on one of my records 25 years later. It's all full circle, Steve. Yes. That's right. he's, he's a believer. Carmen Gorillo, what an awesome oh, guy. He's no. a believer. He loves the Lord. He's an incredible singer and guitar. Yeah. He was with Tower of Power for a while. Right. So the thing was to not get caught up in the fame. And just real quick, something that really helped us. We had been discovered by Hollywood. And a lady by the name of Terry Moore who met us through my brother, Tim. He was working in a clothing store. When we first started out, we didn't have enough money to just right. do music. We were no. doing that on the side. And my That's brother, right. this famous actress, had come into a clothing store there in the desert up in Palmdale. And she had met Tim. And uh, she, was a, she was a young youth star. She was famous in her youth. And coming up, she was in a movie called Mighty Joe Young and okay. was connected to... All of the leading, you know, Cary Grant, Glenn Ford, you name it, all of, all of those people. But she was, I think, had been out at a spa or something, and they, uh, she was on her way home and stopped in a clothing store for her male friend that was with her, and she met Tim. Wow. And got just talking with him, and he mentioned music, and that he was a preacher's kid, and she got interested, and she was like, so you sing? And because, you know, some of those Hollywood people are very, very bold. They're, you know, they'll just talk to you about anything. Right. And he goes, yeah. And she says, really? Sing for me. <laughs> he goes, well, I'm working right now. She goes, well, can can you take a break? Can you take five, ten minutes? And, and she says, do you play an instrument? And he goes, yeah, I have my guitar in my car. <laughs> and she goes, go get your guitar. And she had him sing for her. Well, within a month, she was at our church. She came from Hollywood, her home in Hollywood, back out to Palmdale to our church to hear us perform for her. Then she sets up a party up in the heights of Beverly Hills, invites all of her friends, 
including Diane Cannon, Glenn Ford, a bunch of other famous industry people, and we're standing by the pool singing our Jesus songs. For her. I love it. And Diane Cannon gets up and sings probably the only Jesus song she knows, which was Do Lord, Do Lord. Or Do Remember. <laughs> or do remember. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and at one time she was oh, married my. to Cary Grant. So yeah. I meet Glenn Ford, and I oh, grew up watching goodness. Glenn Ford movies with my dad. Crazy. And I meet Glenn Ford, and he's, how you doing, kid? You know, I'm doing pretty good right now. You know, how does this happen? You know, but we had Andre Crouch with us, our dad, our brother Gary. We had some people there to be a support system. They wanted to sign us to a contract. Guess who was there who spoke to us? The Lord spoke to us through a man that did not know how God was using him. His name is Mike Post. He's one of the most famous theme song show writers out there hill street blues yeah just one of them yeah he takes us aside from there and there's a question he asked and i i'm sorry if i'm going a bit long no i love it with there there's no time limit by the way with okay he took us away from the party a little bit and he said this to us he goes i i want to ask you guys some questions and he says but they might not be happy if they knew I was doing this. So let's keep it on the download, you know, because he was kind of there representing music, maybe a producer, you know, Curb Productions or that back in the sure. day. Curb. That's right. so, so he goes, so you guys, you know, I like your look and I like your sound, your voices. He says, but so like you really, you really are singing about Jesus, right? You did really, that's your thing, you know, uh, because... They're not necessarily interested in that. Mm -hmm. They want to make you movie stars or pop stars or rock sure. stars. They, they, they want to be involved with that. And he goes, I get a sense that you guys are, you know, you're young and you're real. And, and we, he says, so that's what you believe and that's what you're, you feel strongly. But we're like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Our dad's here. Right. He's yeah. a minister. We're minister's <laughs> kids. You know? Wow. And but we really meant that from our heart. Is if we can sing for Jesus and that be on a large stage, wonderful. But it's not necessarily trying to be famous or be movie stars. He goes, Well, let me tell you something. He goes, If you work hard and you use your gifts and, and get with the right people, he said, You'll be fine. But he said, This is not for you. Wow. This is not for you. Oh my. And you kind of had to take it that he would, that he had a heart and he wasn't just trying to, you know, get rid of us. Right. That he really sensed something. And God had said, these are mine and they need a little help here. Right. And not get drawn into this Hollywood thing. Wow. And we did not even go into the meeting with the with Terry Moore. and the, We didn't even go in there. We stood outside. They went in. They came out. And they said, well... We'll talk to you all later. And we drove away from there. And it was like all of us. There was a, just a full consensus that we're going to be fine. And Andre, Andre was like, you guys are going to make records about Jesus. You don't, right. you don't need wow. the, the Hollywood thing. Mm -hmm. Ten years later from that, it was 1971. Ten years later, we were on the Grammy Awards singing about Jesus. See that? That's what I'm saying. God orders our starts and our stops, Steve. I like that. You know, even in, in your life, and even though we weren't connected necessarily, but I have to say that God opened the doors, as it says, Revelation 3, 7, 8. He opens doors that no man can lock, but he also locks doors that no man can open. Right. And who would know that Mike Post, God used him instrumentally yes. in your life. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know what his spiritual background would be but he was looking out for you what a oh what a great story what a great story you know he's got to be a, a a good guy and a really gifted guy because yeah. of the incredible That's success right. that, that he's had in his life but you said hurdles and what it is is if you're running a race and you're doing doing the hurdles but that's not how you train that's where you need god to lift you at those times, over mm -hmm. those. And you know what? Sometimes even the guys that train trip That's right. on the hurdles. That's right. And so because we weren't trained, we definitely tripped <laughs> on some hurdles. Right. 
you know, later in our lives, we went through things where we were we were disillusioned or we we really our faith had to be tested that are you really in this for the Lord? Or are you in it for fame and money? Sure. That's right. You know, and also when you're a pioneer, you're smoothing a path or you're, you're cutting a path for people to come along. That's and right. I got to say, we, we got a text the other day from the guys from New Song. Oh, man. And they were just sending us a text to tell us, you know, Eddie Carswell went to this church back in the day and saw the archers, and he had, was a new That's Christian right. and got yeah. all inspired. And now you have New Song and you have Winter Jam. And and in the text it said, we had 27,000 kids give their heart to Jesus this winter, and you guys are a part of that. See that. My brother oh. Tim and I were like, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I know, me the too. Texting back, you just made our year. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's what you, that's what it's all about. That's right. You know, yeah. It's wonderful. To see what God does. Yeah. Well, Steve, I'm doing a women's retreat in a few weeks, and I'm talking about the legacy of faith and what we what we love, what we live, and what we leave. Yes. And I'm telling you, you loved your music. You still do. Yes. You lived your music, and now you're leaving a legacy of faith with a new generation or several generations of music that the archers continue to speak. I, I praise God for your life, and I praise God for Tim. I'm going to have Tim on, too, I'm, eventually. I want to have him on as well, if he'll acquiesce. As Andre Crouch used to say, to God be the, be the glory. glory. Sing it, to sing God it. God yes. Glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. That's what it is, you know. And we're just glad that we're still here to say that. Amen. And say it to God be the glory because we would not have traveled the path that we had without God bringing us in contact with people that championed us and that encouraged us and their expertise lifted us up. The producers, the engineers, the musicians, Pat Boone, Andre Crouch, and many others that, right. that inspired us. And to God be the glory for all of that, because we're just some preacher's kids from Riverbank, California. (laughs) And that's episode number 100 of the Subiquitous Podcast. I tell you what, if you want any any inspiration, you're going to need to play this over and over again. Steve, thank you again. Is there a way that anybody listening to the podcast can at least be in touch with you? I know you have a Facebook page. Is there an Archers uh, website that they can get on? I don't have a website, but there is the Archers Music Band page on Facebook. Tim Archers on Facebook. Janice Archer Cruz, C-R-U-S-C, is on Facebook. Steve, right. My Facebook is Stephen Mark Archer, Stephen with a P-H. And then Tim has a website, timarchermusic.com. In fact, you can even get the Archers products there That's at good. that website. Absolutely. And you can find out more about the new project. It's, right. And I'm going to order it in eight track. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you know that we literally had to do, when we went to South Africa, we had to take a two track machine to play, <laughs> to play our tracks on. <laughs> I don't it's, doubt it. I don't doubt it. The huge TAC, TAC two track. <laughs> yeah. Two, day, oh, two days awesome. ago, I was with uh, out at Chris Christian's. Oh, and, uh, how fun. You know, he's yeah. the guy that produced my solo albums. Right, right. We were talking about the uh, tape. <laughs> Well, thank you, Steve, and thank you to all of you that have been listening. You can also get on SueDuffield.com. I'm going to have all the links that uh, Steve talked about on my website, and uh, all you have to do is go there, and you can click on The Archer's brand-new project that's coming out in the fall, and uh, it's their 50th anniversary. I cannot wait for that, and I promise you this. I guarantee it. If you did not know who The Archer's are, and you're younger than we are, by far get online get on youtube and have the enlightenment of your life because there's nobody nobody like steve archer thank you steve for being on the subiquitous podcast thank you sue love y'all